Scott over at The Versatile Guitarist. In this video, I wanna show you how to play gypsy jazz using a nylon string guitar. You might think that you need a pick or a steel string guitar to play this style, but here I wanna show you several ways that we can play rhythm and lead using the right hand. And if you're at all familiar with classical Spanish finger style guitar techniques, we might find that playing with our fingers can be even easier than playing gypsy jazz the normal way. So as I said, and as you probably already know, gypsy jazz is all about playing with a pick, and it takes a long time to get really fast playing with a pick. If, if you can do that already, that's great. But with nylon string, we have so many other options. So we're gonna start playing just rhythms here, and I'm gonna show you the different ways that we can play that classic gypsy jazz rhythm. So if we were playing with a pick, we're gonna play this chord A minor six. This is a classic gypsy jazz type of style of chord. I'm on the fifth fret of the sixth string. I'm blocking the fifth string just by relaxing that finger, or rather not having to be totally on my fingertip. And then I'm playing the fourth fret with my first finger here of the fourth string, that's F sharp, and then laying this across. We also could just play these three, but this is better, I think, for us now because we can play a bunch of strings without having to worry about muting others other than the fifth string. Okay, so here's the chord. And with a pick, if we were playing pick style, we would go and we're relaxing the left hand. We're gonna be talking a lot about the right hand, but uh, in the left hand, to get that rhythm sound, we're gonna be relaxing in between every beat just about one, two, three, four, one, two. And this is a swing rhythm, although we're playing quarter notes, so how can you swing a quarter note? You can't. But every now and then, we might play an upstroke, and that upstroke should be swung or shuffled like this. If you wanna do that. Now, if you're not gonna use a pick, and this whole video is about not using a pick, we can use our thumb on the bass notes and use any other finger. For now, let's use the index finger and play that downstroke there, and that would sound like this. For me, that sounds a little bit too separated. I like to just use one single finger, like this. And it's almost like you're using a pick. You can put your thumb on top of your index finger, kind of press them together, and pretend that you have a pick. And I'm still using that nail. The nail is now the pick of my index finger. And if I want to get an upstroke in there, I'll use my thumb to do that. Another option would be to use the middle and a ring finger squeezed together, and that just gives us more volume. You see that in flamenco a lot? Go ahead. On an upstroke, we can still do our thumb up, so that sounds good to me also. A little more power out of that. If you're familiar with some flamenco techniques, specifically this thing, the triplet rasqueo, we can throw that into gypsy jazz and it really fits the style because when these guys play with a pick, they do this a lot. One, two, three, four, da, da, da in some triplets like that now and then. Well, we can do that with these three fingers, and this is a classic, awesome flamenco type of thing to do. It's gonna be up with a thumb, down with a middle finger, and down with a thumb. That's a triplet. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, triplet, triplet. So if we did that, we can go. If you wanna throw that in there. A little bit harder to do, um, but that kind of mixes it up a little bit. Let's look at the chords for a classic gypsy jazz song called Jangology, written by Django Reinhardt. We're gonna play A major over C sharp, then we have this diminished, C diminished chord. This is a G over B, then this is a B flat diminished seventh. Now, just notice I'm doing the same thing twice. So I'm on the ninth fret, blocking that string, seventh fret with my first finger, ninth fret here, and the rest of the strings we're trying to mute. Then I just bring these two fingers down, but keep that one. Now just do the whole thing again, two frets to the left. There's that drag these down, and here we have an A minor 7, this is frets 5, skip a string, 5, 5, and then for D7, it's a 5, 4, 5, G7 chord inversion, and then we can play G major 6, that's a 3rd fret, skip a string, 2nd fret, and then we're on the 4th fret here. So let's do that with our right hand techniques, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. come back to some other rhythm ideas because that's not the only rhythm that we can play in gypsy jazz and in fact some of the gypsy jazz rhythms that you hear nowadays like the bolero rhythm and the gypsy bossa are very much in our wheelhouse as Spanish guitar players. So let's check out Djangology with the chords and the melody. <laughs> Before I show you the Djangology melody, let me show you what we do as Spanish nylon string guitar players to play loudly. And gypsy jazz is all about aggressive sound. So when you're playing with a pick, um, watch these guys are doing a lot of downstrokes. And they're doing that because it sounds more aggressive and they're doing what we would call a rest stroke 
in our Spanish guitar type of uh, universe here. We're going to go like that and land on the next string. But when it's really fast, they're going to have to do alternate picking. So we have an advantage as, let's call ourselves flamenco style players for the moment. We're going to play piccolo technique. And that's with the index and middle rest strokes. And that gives us the reason that we use rest strokes are kind of on melody and scale type phrases. And that just gives us more volume. So that's perfect for gypsy jazz. We can also use our thumb, because in flamenco, we're gonna play closer to the bridge down here and play thumb rest strokes so often. So that is like a perfect gypsy jazz kind of crossover thing. We're gonna come back to the thumb a little bit later and it's, there's a really awesome thing that we can do with the thumb. But for now, for Djangology, we have an extra advantage here because if you played with a pick, we would have to do this. Here's the melody. Okay, what I'm doing there is I'm kind of doing a little sweet picking here. And that's not that hard to do with a pick. Of course, things, everything's hard to do when you do it fast. But when we play with our fingers, we have more fingers. We only have one pick, so we can either go down or up. But if we have two or three fingers, we can. there's a real division of labor that we can take advantage of there to play faster. So here, we're just gonna play simply an arpeggio. And my thumb is covering the bass strings, and that keeps them from ringing out. We really can't do that. That's kind of a problem when we're playing with a pick. You can't do that with your right hand. You have to rely on your left hand, and sometimes you just can't do it, and strings are gonna ring out. But here, I'm just covering up those bass strings because I know I don't want to hear them. To play this melody we're playing the sixth fret of the third string and I'm on the fifth fret of the next string and then third fret here. You can kind of hold it like a chord but if you do that and you arpeggiate them they ring out. We really don't want that. We're going to make these notes more individualized so we're going to go and take them off as you go. I'm on the seventh fret of the first string and we're going to drop down here to the fifth fret of the third string, fourth fret here, second fret. Same high note. Now here we're on the fourth fret of the third string. Third fret here, second fret. This time the high note is A. Now I'm here on the third fret of the third string. Second fret, and then that's a diminished chord. Third fret, second fret open. The A goes to G, and the conclusion is using all piccolo technique there. Index and middle rest strokes. Fifth fret, fifth fret, back. Fourth fret, third fret, and back and then fourth fret on the fourth string, down to there. Second time around, it's gonna resolve by going like that. So like I said, we have more options because we're not playing with a pick. So let's try using our thumb. It'll take a little more effort, but it's very much like kind of a Spanish style of playing and we wanna get faster at that anyway. So I'm gonna go like this. Everything is a downstroke. To me, that sounds a lot more gypsy jazz-ish. It's more aggressive sounding. We've got that nail in there, and we can really pound away at it. And that gets me to another subject here. Like, you see gypsy jazz players, and there's no one way to play gypsy jazz, but these guys are all nerding out on just this specific style, and they very often move from the wrist like this. Now, that's something that we're gonna see later on, which is very, very flamenco-ish. So moving from the wrist is a lot harder to do. If you play, like, if you're playing shred metal or something, you would have your wrist close in like this, playing really fast. That way is actually not as hard as having your wrist way out like this, but that just gives you this really aggressive swing, and you can, of course, swing is another um, term that we're using rhythmically, but we're literally swinging our wrist and really pounding into the string, and it just gives a, this really awesome attack. And in Spanish guitar, we do that a lot, and we can do that with our wrist. I'm playing a thumb rest stroke here, um, and you notice how I'm touching a string. So I can't really move from my wrist. Just using that. Now that sounds cool. That sounds good to me. But we could also jump out here and pound away at the string like this. It's a little more difficult to do that because we have to really target exactly the string we're trying to hit. But it sounds different. So if you can do that, to me, that sounds more gypsy jazz. Let's look at a couple of gypsy jazz licks that we can play with our fingers. So if we were playing with a pick, this is a very common one. I got an E minor chord here. I'm on the ninth fret, eighth fret, seventh fret. And I'm gonna play the root way up here, go down a fret, major seventh. Here's a minor seventh, here's a major sixth note. And this lick goes like this, real common. But if we use our fingers, we can get that division of labor happening and make it actually easier. So let's go like this. I'm gonna play my ring finger on the first string, then my middle finger, and then my thumb on the third string, and then my index here. So let's practice that just for a minute. I'm going like this. 
So it's basically an arpeggio like this. The only difference is I'm playing these two fingers, my ring and my middle finger, on the first string. So again, it's this. So if I plug this lick into that, we get this. And to me, that's a lot easier to do than using a pick. At the beginning of this video, you saw me play this over minor swing, and I'm doing this. Okay, we have an A minor triad here. Here's a major sixth, F sharp. There are those three notes. In Jangology, we had a similar shape there, and I'm going like this. Now, if you're playing that with a pick, it's super hard, I think, to do that. We have to lean over like this with the pick to get this kind of upward sweep. And that takes a lot more of, of doing something more, that's much more foreign to us if you're playing with a pick. And if you're at all used to doing arpeggios with your right hand in any form, that's just gonna feel pretty good. Now the left hand is another story. But what's happening here is I'm going this note, play it again, do a pull off, and then I've got this one and that one. For the right hand, I'm going, playing the ring finger twice. I'm playing the ring finger, ring finger again, middle finger, index. I'm using arpeggio technique there to play a gypsy jazz phrase. So the options that we have here for lead playing are thumb rest strokes. And I would, I would prefer that when things aren't that fast. When things get going fast, we can use piccolo technique, index and middle rest strokes. And the other thing we can do when things get even faster or when we're crossing strings, which is such a problem on guitar, whether you're playing with a pick or fingers or whatever, if there's an arpeggio where we play one note on each string, super hard to make that clean. So we can use that right hand arpeggio technique to do that. And that's something that we really can't do with a pick. Case in point, let's check out Django Reinhardt's solo to Honeysuckle Rose, and I'll show you exactly what I would do using arpeggio technique to play a fast phrase. So in that snippet that you saw, I played the same thing two different ways because one time it's slower and one time it's faster. So the first time we have this little G minor arpeggio here. I'm gonna use rest strokes because it's not that fast piccolo technique. So the second time I went like this because it's faster and so I'm playing this arpeggio technique of what we could call a forward arpeggio. Index, middle, ring and I had them all down ahead of time and I basically just peel them off. And then the next note is not as fast as those three that I just played so I do a rest stroke there. Now when you're learning gypsy jazz, whether it's a melody or an actual solo or something, they're never going to tell you what to do unless it's an educational thing that you're looking at. They're not going to tell you do a downstroke with a pick here or an upstroke. Basically it's just in lead sheet form. So that's great for us because it doesn't matter what we do, we can do it however we want. We can use piccolo on those notes, we can use our thumb rest stroke, whatever feels comfortable to us at that moment. And a lead sheet, if you don't know what it is, is just simply the chords and the melody, the bare bones of the song, which is a great launching pad for making a chord melody if you were doing that. So Gypsy Jazz is definitely an ensemble style. You need more than one musician playing. Somebody's gonna play the lead, another person will be playing that rhythm. So we lose a lot if we try to do chord melodies, but some of these songs are so cool and the melodies are so strong that um, we, don't, we don't have to have that thumping rhythm the whole time to make an arrangement. So I've done that. For example, Nuage by Django. in there and the chords, but we definitely lose that thumpy rhythm that we want in gypsy jazz. So when you play Spanish guitar, classical guitar, we very rarely see things that are in a shuffle rhythm or a triplet feel, we can call it, or swinging the eighth note. Nowadays, a lot of gypsy jazz players are playing songs that aren't swing songs from the swing era. They're playing bossa novas, a lot of Latin jazz stuff and boleros and things like that. So for music like that, where we're not swinging the eighth notes, we actually are much more in our wheelhouse as nylon string Spanish guitar players, because gypsy jazz players play some rhythms that actually dovetail nicely with these techniques that we use in Spanish guitar all the time. And the first one I want to show you is the Gypsy Bossa, and that goes like this. So you might be thinking, well that doesn't sound like a bossa nova at all, and it's not. It's basically a rock rhythm. We're going one and two and three and four and very much has a backbeat accent in there. What that means is an accent on the two and the four. So I'm going one and two and three and four and one and mute, three and mute. Now this tends to be more aggressive, especially when we're muting the strings. So I'm using the M and A fingers, like I was saying earlier, squeeze them together and we can get a lot more power out of that. 
going down with M and A and up with the thumb. So this will work over any bossa nova because bossa nova is not swung. So it sounds like a rock beat, but this is actually a great rhythm you can just plug into something that's not a swing song. Let's check out an example of this, a famous awesome gypsy bossa called Bossa Dorado. <laughs> to Bossa Dorado, I've always found hard to play with a pick because we have to skip strings. Especially if you want to play downstrokes, which gives you that more aggressive tone, we'd have to go... And it's not that hard to do. But if we have more than one finger, we can just go like this. Spread those fingers out, or use your thumb here. And here I'm gonna go... And I'm just dragging my finger over, which would be kind of a no-no most of the time, but it actually helps you get some speed. I've heard that called a slip finger piccolo. Just drag it like this. At the beginning of the video, I did that here over this diminished seventh lick. Just dragging that finger across those three strings for extra speed. Another great rhythm that is legitimately gypsy jazz now is the bolero rhythm, and that is perfect for some of the techniques that we use in the right hand. And if we were using a pick, we would go like this. One, triple, a, two, and three, and four, and one, triple, a, two, and three, and four, and... Now that triplet is pretty hard to get. You really have to swing quickly to do that. This technique that I was showing you earlier takes a long time, I guess, to get good at that too, but it's much more easy. There are some things, you know, that are hard and will always be hard, and there are other things that are hard sounding, but they're easy to do, or rather when you get good at them, they're super easy, and that's this technique that I was showing you at the beginning here. So we can use that, or this technique, which is called the four stroke cross scale. This is the pinky going down with the pinky, Ring, middle, index, and we can get a triplet into the next beat using either of those. So we can go like this, or we can go for the bolero rhythm. So that would sound like this. Or if I want to use the four stroke cross scale, we can go. It sounds more strong to me to use the triplet cross scale. Stroke or up. Doesn't matter. Here's a classic basso we can play using the bolero rhythm called Black Orpheus. flamenco with our thumb called alsapua, which is a more advanced thumb technique. But this is where I think gypsy jazz and flamenco really cross over the most. So like I was saying earlier, when you play with a pick, if you want to play like these guys are doing, we're going to really be swinging from the wrist like this. Right? We a lot of those rest strokes where we just kind of land on the string below the string that we're playing like this. Like here I'm playing the third string and I'm going to land on the second string. And that rest stroke really gives us a lot of volume. It's kind of a follow through idea where it allows us, doing rest strokes allows us to actually make more of a follow through motion which creates more volume. And in flamenco we do this technique called alsapua and here's one way that you might hear it. We're doing this motion up with the thumb. It's kind of a very targeted upward strum. So I'm going like this. Down stroke with a thumb, just over a couple of strings, then an up stroke, then a single note rest stroke, and then down again and up, so I'm going... I can get the illusion of more speed by doing a slur in between, like this. That kind of thing. Well, if we do that on one string, it's going to sound like this. Awesome technique. It takes a while to get used to this. I'm using my wrist to do that, which is harder to do, but you don't have to do that. You can just use your thumb and maybe put your index finger on a string for stability. So I play the thumb rest stroke, hammer on, and then an upstroke with the thumb, but not a heavy upstroke, just a real light one. And that is a triplet. Very flamenco thing to do. Now, what does that have to do with gypsy jazz? In gypsy jazz, especially those classic old swing tunes, those are shuffle rhythms, and a shuffle is based on a triplet. So if we play triplets, we can play over a shuffle like this. But 
what about waltzes? Well, I already showed you how to do a waltz. At the beginning, we did this. Just don't do as many of these fingers. So we're gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we're playing our thumb on the first beat. On the second beat, we're gonna cut the note off by relaxing. On the third one, let it ring. So we go one, two, three, one, two, three. A little staccato sound there in the middle of the measure. Check out a great old French waltz called Indifference. If you notice for the lead in that song, I'm doing arpeggio technique because we're playing one note per string, and that's pretty hard to do with a pick, but here I'm just simply going thumb, index, middle, ring rest strokes when I can do them. These are not rest strokes though. So we have definitely an advantage as fingerstyle players in the right hand when it comes to arpeggios like that. This is just the tip of the iceberg with gypsy jazz, but if you've got these right hand techniques, as a nylon string player, we can play any gypsy jazz song ever, whether it's the rhythm or the lead. And be sure to download my guide for this, where I tab out everything that I've done in this video with some explanations there for you. And as I said before, this is definitely an ensemble style of music. We need at least two people, one person to play the rhythm and one person to play the lead. But in this video, I wanna show you how to play a classic Django song, where we play the chords and the melody on one guitar. Click it. I don't have all day. I can't just sit here all day while you don't click it. Anyway.